This video is sponsored by the Ultimate Freelancing Bundle by StudyWebDevelopment.com, which gives you everything you need to start your own freelancing business, including a 130-page in-depth guide, invoicing and client proposal templates, website templates, an SEO checklist, and much more. Visit the link in the description and use the code BRAD25 to get 25% off. Hey, what's going on guys? So one of the most difficult parts of being a self-taught developer is finding the right resources and mediums to learn with. And if you have an internet connection, you have access to pretty much all the information in the world, but there's so many different routes that you can take that it can get pretty daunting, especially for beginners. So in this video, I'm going to share 10 methods of learning that help me become a self-taught developer. And it's not like any of these methods, are, like there's stuff you've never heard of or anything that's special, but the point is to just talk about each one Um, talk about the pros and cons and share my experience with you. A lot of people ask me, how do I learn things and stuff like that. Um, I did try to put them in order as to what I think helped me the least to what helped me the most, but that was kind of hard to do. So take that with a grain of salt. All right, so let's get started. The first one here is reading books, and I'm not talking about audio books. Uh, but actually reading them. This definitely isn't my favorite medium for learning how to code specifically, but the, it is great for learning concepts and things like soft skills, interview preparation, business, things like that, as opposed to specific coding syntax. So books like Clean Code by Uncle Bob, um, John Sonmez has a great book on soft skills. These are the types of books I would recommend. There are some good coding books, however, I think that it's hard to retain unless you're actually sitting in front of a computer trying the exam. examples and stuff like that. Um, I do think that they can be a good overview for technologies and you can just kind of hang out on your couch and read them. But I don't think you're going to learn as much as you would by, say, following a, a video course and some of the other methods. Um, and also books go out of date really quick because technology moves so fast and books just take so long to write and so long to update. But again, they're great for more higher level programming related subjects. So next we have audio books and podcasts. I know these are different, but I think you can, you can get some of the same knowledge from both. Um, these definitely aren't great for learning how to code, but they're, they're great supplements for learning um, things about the industry and stuff like that. The best thing to me about both of these is that you can, you can listen to an audio book or a podcast at almost any time. So if you're going for a long drive or you're at the gym or you're waiting for an appointment, you can throw on an audio book or listen to a quick podcast. And um, I, I think that they're, they're great for that. Um, I, as far as audiobooks, they're, they're good for large topics, heavy topics, and then podcasts are great for like little tidbits, news, and stuff like that. Um, if you're a JavaScript developer, I would suggest checking out Syntax if you haven't already. That's a, a fantastic podcast. Code Pen Radio is really good. Um, there's a few others as well that, um, that you can learn quite a bit from. So next we have written tutorials and blog posts. And there's some great websites that offer free written tutorials. Scotch.io is really good. Toots Plus. There's some great medium articles out there on all different subjects. And even though you're reading, they're, they're much different than books because they're right to the point. There's plenty of updated tutorials. Um, also, everything is right there. You don't need to pause or rewind or fast forward. The code examples are right in front of you and you can easily reference them later on if you want. Just bookmark the, the web page. Um, the thing that I don't really like about written tutorials is a lot of the time they don't explain things very well. They have a large chunk of code and write maybe two or three sentences about it and just kind of leave you hanging not knowing what half the code does and of course the reason for that is if they explained every line it would turn into an ebook so um, they just there's just not enough room and I think these I think tutorials that are written are great for specific things that you're trying to learn like let's say uploading a file or something like that uh, I think they're great supplements So next we have structured e-courses or platforms, whatever you want to call them. So Free Code Camp, Code Academy, Team Treehouse. Um, these are platforms that give you a, a, a strict curriculum to follow, and they give you a lot of structure. I think these are, are really great for for absolute beginners that don't really know where to start. I think that these are the, the most similar to traditional schooling. If you're lost and you just don't know where to begin, something like Free Code Camp will be very helpful to you. 
Um, a lot of these platforms have these interactive editors and they tell you what to type and stuff like that. So I think these can be really helpful for beginners. For myself, I've tried a few of them and, and they're just not for me. I just thought that they were kind of boring and slow paced, but that's just my opinion. I know a lot of people say that they actually owe their careers to um, you know, a platform like Free Code Camp. So it's worth checking out, especially if you're if you're someone that needs a lot of structure. All right, so the next resource is uh, can be an incredible one is and that's other humans or other developers. So if you can find friends or coworkers or wh whoever, anybody at all that is interested in coding and you can get with them and, and maybe build a project together, you can learn a lot that way. Um, if you don't have any friends that are into this stuff, you could go to a meetup or a conference, um, at least talk to other people about what they're into. If you're just starting out and you can find a good developer as a mentor, that's like striking gold. If you can actually find a good developer that has the time, um, but that's kind of hard to do. You could pay for someone's time, but that gets really expensive really quick. So I probably wouldn't recommend that unless you're loaded. Uh, but there's also online communities forums, Slack channels. Um, I started the developer hangout discord server, which has become pretty popular. So you can check that out. Um, connecting in real life is obviously much better, but if you can't do that, then you have online communities where you can interact with people and, and learn from other people as well. All right. So the next one is code examples and this can be great, but it's more for experienced developers looking to learn something new. Um, looking through GitHub repos, cloning them to your machine, playing around with the code. I've, I've benefited a lot from doing this. Um, it's helped me to figure out how certain things work. The downside is you don't really have any guidance. There's no tutorial or course or anything. You just have the code to look at. Um, you do have the discussion thread or the issues thread. If you want to, if you check that out, maybe you can contact the developer if you're really interested in something. Um, but I would definitely pair this along with some of the other methods. All right, so of course we have YouTube tutorials, which is a great free way to learn things. And what I really like about YouTube is that you can search for absolutely anything. If you want to learn about, let's say, React hooks, you get a ton of videos. If you want to narrow it down to the use effect hook in particular, you get a bunch of videos on that. Um, some are great, some aren't so great. So you have to kind of weed that out, weed out the bad ones with the really bad audio and um, the ones that don't really explain much. But there's a ton of great information on YouTube. And I think if you find the right group of, of YouTubers or instructors that you can really learn a lot. Um, some great channels for tutorials are the Net Ninja, Academind, um, Dev Tips, Level Up Toots. Uh, design course, Derek Ban, as I'm sure most of you guys know all these channels, uh, if you're watching mine, the, all those channels are in the recommended of my own channel. Um, but you also have other channels that aren't really dedicated to, to tutorials, but they give a lot of great insight around development and around the industry. So channels like Chris Hawks, um, Dylan Israel, Frederick Christensen, Real Tough Candy, Coding Phase. Uh, there's, a, there's a ton of really great coding channels or coding related channels that are really underrated and most of the channels that that I watch they have like 10 20,000 30,000 subscribers and I feel like they deserve a lot more so hopefully you know this this niche grows uh, in the future on YouTube um, you also have channels that have conferences and stuff like that talks uh, coding tech is a channel that's great for that stuff um, and you can learn a lot that way, especially about very, very new technologies that are just coming out. Um, one of the, the negative parts of YouTube is sometimes you'll you'll watch a YouTuber for months or years and then they just stop making content. And that that's unfortunate. But you have to realize that most most um, coding YouTubers don't do this full time. So they have other things going on and they might just not have time. Um, so that's just that's just part of it. And you have to kind of respect that. All right, so next we have standalone courses. So platforms like Udemy, Pluralsight, lynda.com, Skillshare, there's, there's a ton of them out there. Um, I owe most of my career to this method and it's one of my favorite ways to learn because I can pick my own subjects and my own pace. Um, I feel like the structured platforms kind of force you to learn at their pace and you don't get enough freedom, but again, that's good for people that really need the structure. 
I think that once you get started and you know what you're going to learn or what you want to learn, then you can move on to pick, picking, picking your own courses. Um, I teach on Udemy, but I own about 200 courses on things from JavaScript to C Sharp and Unity to database design to low level languages, a, a ton of which I haven't even started yet. Um, but it's all stuff that that I want to learn. And honestly, I think that if you find the right courses and you spend maybe three to three hundred dollars, I think you can actually learn more than you would from college, because a lot of these courses, they have projects that are very close to what you'll be doing in the real world, whereas college is mostly theory and, and fundamentals and stuff like that. Not really practical stuff that you're going to be that you're really going to be doing. So the next one is something that um, is crucial and I think a lot of beginners don't realize it and that's the documentation. So whenever you're going to learn something new, this should be the first place you look. It's definitely the first place I look when I want to learn anything. This is where you're going to get the most reliable, the most relevant information, the latest information. Um, a lot of times tutorials get outdated, but the documentation is the, the one place where you're going to get the the most updated code or, or examples. Um, for the most part, the the big frameworks, uh, languages, stuff like that, they have pretty good documentation. Occasionally, you're going to get uh, crappy docs that, that are pretty much useless and you have to look elsewhere to learn whatever it is. Um, but for the most part, they give you good examples. A lot of times they'll include a tutorial. This, sh this should probably be the first tutorial that you do because it's right from the creator. Um, so always check the docs when you're when you're going to learn something new. All right. So the number one way to learn is to create your own projects and get your hands dirty. Um, this is for the most part, in addition to any of the previous methods, you obviously can't just start to build something without learning it somehow. Um, but you definitely need to do this. Otherwise, you're going to get stuck in tutorial tutorial purgatory and you're not going to know how to uh, put into play what you've learned. So what I would suggest and what I do is take a course, let's say a Udemy course and go through it you know do the project uh, to a T and then once you're done take all the concepts you've learned um, even take the application you've built and then turn it into something else okay turn it into something else that's that's related um, or take the project and just add on to it and what this does for you is it gives you unscripted experience when you watch a tutorial or a course and you follow along it's it's smooth you're just copying another person's code but when you do this, you're actually it's closer to the real world. You're going to run into problems. You're going to Google. You're going to post on Stack Overflow, uh, ask for help. It's it's all stuff that you're going to be doing when you actually get a job programming. Uh, so I think it's it's crucial. Uh, like I said, otherwise you're going to be stuck in tutorial pur purgatory and not know uh, where to go from there because you don't want to just spend three years just taking online courses. You want to actually build stuff. All right, guys, so that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed this and I just wanted to give you some insight on these different learning methods, give you my own experience and opinions and take what I said with a grain of salt. Uh, as I said, books aren't my favorite way to learn how to code, but books may be your favorite and that's absolutely fine. Everyone learns in a different way. Um, what I've been thinking about doing is creating a video or maybe a series of videos where I take something that I know nothing about and record my experience trying to learn it and the, the methods that I go through and stuff like that. It'll probably be pretty messy, but I think it'll give you some insight on how at least how I learn. Um, and I think a lot of people would like that. But that's it, guys. If you like this, please leave it a like. If you can follow me on social media, I'd really appreciate that. And I will see you next time. Hey guys, one of the best, if not the best resource I can refer you to for starting a freelance business is at studywebdevelopment.com slash freelancing. The creator Kyle shared it with me and I can personally vouch that this bundle is well worth it. You get a 130 page guide to freelancing and it comes with things like invoice templates, client proposals, HTML and CSS templates, a portfolio website, access to a private Facebook community and much more. So use the code BRAD25 to get 25% off today.